us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord, God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy in the contemplation of those mighty acts, whereby you have given us life and immortality through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from Mark's Gospel. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethpage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this, The Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a coal tied near a door outside of the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the coal? They told them that what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the coal to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those went and went ahead, and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna! In the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at him, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. On this day you entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph. It was proclaimed as king of kings by those who spread their garments and the branches of palm along his way. Let these branches be for us signs of his victory, and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king, and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns in glory with you in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ, amen. Psalm 118. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let us go now proclaim his mercy endures forever. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hosanna, Lord, Hosanna. Lord, sin is spouse and steps. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. God is the Lord. He has shined in us. Form a procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will thank you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not into joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find in none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, 
giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with the word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 31. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. trouble. My eyes are consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years were sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction, and my bones are consumed. I have become a reproach to all my enemies, and even to my neighbors, and a dismay to those of my acquaintance. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. I am forgotten like a dead man out of mind. I am as useless as a broken pot, for I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said, You are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face shine upon your servant, and in your loving kindness stay safe. A reading from Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave. Being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, are you king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they ask. Now a man named Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. 
Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call king of the Jews? They shouted back, crucify him. Pilate asked them, why? What evil has he done? But they shouted back all the more, crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him, and they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you would destroy the temple in three days and build it back? Save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Leveli, Lemma, Sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the passerbys heard it, they said, listen, he is calling for Elisha. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, wait, let us see whether Elisha will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly this man was God's son. It might be easier for us to wave some palm branches today on Palm Sunday and then gather again next Sunday, Easter, to celebrate the resurrection. And skip the rest. Skip Holy Week. Skip Jesus washing his disciples' feet on Monday, Thursday, and then skip the sufferings of Good Friday. Maybe it is easier to show up for the parade, 
but ignore the paradox, which is the cross. And yet, Palm Sunday reminds us that despair and hope will travel together on this road. We will despair of the brokenness of our world and for our lives. And then we will place our hope in the one who travels alongside us, the one who leads us onwards in this strange parade called life. Hosanna, we cry. Save us, we pray. And then picking up our cloaks and our crosses, we walk in our way behind Jesus. Knowing that he already has traveled the road that we are upon, he has already taken this journey. We hope to travel from pain to praise, from suffering to salvation, from death to life. Palm Sunday is a complex day. Things shift so fast. Just in the last few moments, we have hailed Jesus as the triumphant king entering Jerusalem Hosanna to the highest, we have cried. And now we join the crowd again. It's the same crowd, only this time they are crying, crucify him, crucify him. And all within just 24 hours. Indeed, Palm Sunday is a complex day within this fickle world in which we live. In fact, there were two processions that day. Two processions into Jerusalem that day. Jesus rode a colt down the Mount of Olives on the east side of the city, surrounded by a crowd of followers. They spread their cloaks, and little children waved their palm branches in the air ahead of him. He wore no armor. The crowd was celebrative, and the kids, well, they were joyful. Entering from the west came Pontius Pilate riding upon a war horse through the largest gate in the city, bedecked in a full array of armor with his troops marching confidently behind him. Instead of palm branches, there were arrayed imperial banners. Now, Pontius Pilate and his troops were there to enforce Roman law and to keep order within the city of Jerusalem and monitor its Jewish festivities. Two parades that day entered the city, one coming in from the east, the other coming in from the West, but they could not have been more different. Jesus would soon be turning over the tables in the temple, where leaders were now collaborating with the Romans. Soon his support would fall away. By the end of the week, his disciples would be in hiding. Chief disciple Peter would have denied him three times as the religious leaders in the Sanhedrin, the Jewish ruling council, condemn him, and later the Roman leaders send him to death. God's perfect love hung on the cross. It's a strange fruit, isn't it? A strange fruit. It's a haunting song that gets to the heart of Palm Sunday, also called the Sunday of the Passion. It's an old Billy Holiday jazz song that begins with these words. There's a strange fruit hanging from the tree. The lyrics of this song, actually written by a Jewish poet, 
were based on a poem about the lynching of African Americans in the South. Preacher Sam Lloyd, who grew up in Mississippi and once was the chaplain at the University of the South in Swanee, reflects on this strange fruit saying of the fruit. It's the fruit of the human race that has not learned to live without destroying one another, that has turned to violence again and again to solve its problems. We are part of a species that will easily seek vengeance, that will steadily ignore the suffering of others, that seems to know little about forgiveness. Then there is the violent of abject poverty. Today we might add the suffering of COVID-19 that apparently makes no distinction between race or gender or age or economic level or personal status or nationality in its ability to kill. But let us not ignore the paradox of all of this. There's irony in the story of Holy Week. The paradox is the cross of Jesus Christ. You see, civil rights era times, back in those times, blacks would march on white churches enter and provoke disorder during the worship service. White parishioners were understandably angry and they were confused about how to handle this, when it happened, if it happened. And I recall a conversation I had years ago with a man who I respected very much, who had been a parishioner in his late 20s in a church in the South where he was starting his career, which in effect would be three successful careers. He was newly married, he was beginning to raise his family. He was back from fighting in the Korean War and he was on the vestry. And there was a rumor that was passed about that next Sunday, blacks would march on his church. And the vestry had gathered in, believe it or not, an upper room. It was a second floor room where vestry meetings were held. And they were in a quiet panic and enraged and confused about what to do. That is, if it happened. But they wanted to be ready, being responsible members of vestry. And so in the process of this conversation playing out, someone asked him, they said, what would you do? What would you suggest? He suggested this. He suggested we confront them at the door and ask them to state their intentions before allowing them to enter. Confront them ask them to state their intentions before allowing them into worship. And the rector said, has anyone ever treated you in the manner in which you suggest? And he said, I, I took a step back and I said, well, no. And then the rector said, we will treat our black brothers and sisters no differently than we treat ourselves. And on the next Sunday, people did in fact show up and members of the black community were treated just as the rector had said. We will treat our black brothers and sisters no differently than we treat ourselves. 
My friend said, to this day, I feel very guilty about having suggested what I suggested. Very guilty. But you see, that's, that's the paradox. There it is. It's not just that Palm Sunday reminds us of despair and hope and how they travel together around the road, because often they carefully accommodate each other, realizing it's best to simply avoid each other. But the Christian promise, the Christian promise of the cross, which is the symbol of this paradox for us, is the symbol of this confrontation of evil with good and darkness with light and death in all of its married forms with life. Because the life that is then born out of this kind of death, blessed by Jesus on the cross, this life will have the last word and the last word will be mercy and the last word will be God's Easter triumph on the cross. And this life, renewed and grounded in God, this Easter life, it will prevail against all gods. And all evil, and all brokenness, and all pain. It will prevail. It is God's last word on any and all dark subjects. Life. Christ. My friend never forgot the meeting that night when fear and panic quietly lingered in the capable hearts of this particular city's elders. He never forgot that night. You see, 40 years later, he looked back on it and he said, it changed my life. Literally change. On this day, the church hears again the passion of our Lord into which we are baptized. We follow along the steep road into Jerusalem as pilgrims continue to do, recalling the love poured out for all. Recreated by the mind of Christ, let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs, saying, Lord, make your face to shine upon your servant. For the whole church throughout the world, its bishops, clergy, and all the baptized, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord make, make your face to shine upon your servants. For those who are preparing for baptism and for their teachers and sponsors, for schools everywhere, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, make, make your face to shine upon your servants. For peace among nations and forbearance among all people, for the building of hope in our holy land, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, make your face to shine upon your servants. For this assembly, as we walk the road toward the cross, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, make your face to shine upon your servants. For the weary, for the sick, for those who are consumed with sorrow, for the forgotten, for the isolated, for those in our holy land still living in refugee camps, and for all who have commended themselves to us with any need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Make your face to shine upon your servants. For all who are in harm's way, for all who risk being an interfaith dialogue with those different from themselves and who seek peace in our holy land, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, make your face to shine upon your servants. For all who have died, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, make your face to shine upon your servants. We give thanks for all the departed who had the mind of Christ and were humble servants of God. For ourselves, that we may be obedient even unto death, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, make your face to shine upon your servants. Into your hands, O God, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray through your Son.
Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Come of thee, O Lord, and, and of thy own have we given thee. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is 
right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, for our sins he was lifted high upon the cross, that he may draw the whole world to himself. By his suffering and death, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore we praise you, tuning our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and where we have fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks, to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ is God. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption of Father in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you everlasting life. Amen. 
Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for feeding us with the Spirit of the truth and the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and for assuring us of these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as glad as the of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The peace of God will pass all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.